Hey, we are right, Pierre. We were here at the Peerless AV show, and I'm here with Steve Goggles. How are you doing, Steve? I am good. How are you? Yeah. How's Let's everything see. with Plexus AV? Well, awesome. Like, we're getting very close to our launch, so I'm expecting uh, that we'll have some good news around Infocom. Yeah. And uh, I'm excited to be here to uh, to show our solution to uh, the, the people here at the Peerless event. When was the last time you were in London? Uh, probably a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I've been here a couple of times in the last couple of months. So, okay. yeah. So in terms of um, the interest, what kind of verticals are you seeing? There's there's that uptake of. Uh... Uh, I would say education is a is a is a big one. We're uh, we're talking to um, to many. I would say more IT heavy uh, managers in the education space. There's a lot of interest there because they're really looking at like how do I deal with multiple buildings, multiple locations. Uh, geographically uh, very different locations, right? And that's where really our system shines because you can connect all those locations together. Uh, and also they're looking for a system that is a lot more standardized and a road towards convergence. And that's basically what you get with IPMX being an open standard, right? Uh, so yeah, that's, 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 a good, that's a heavy one. Like medical, we're getting some attention there. Uh, and of course the, the, corporate, the corporate type applications like large uh, meeting room, event centers, those type of things. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of interest from from different different uh, verticals. I want to I want to talk about something because we've got Rob here from Matrox. Um, I want to talk about this collaboration. What I love about IPMX is that you've got all of these supposedly you know competitive brands, but yeah. you're actually working together yes. at a high level. Yeah. And, and that, that, that gives so much reassurance to people like myself or system integrators. You know yeah. that at that really high level, you're working together and you're not going to have some of the compromises that you might have had with previous technologies that, you know, suggested interoperability, but in actual fact, it was all closed. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've actually had exactly this conversation at the ISC with somebody that said, so why would you build something based on a standard? Because then everybody could do it. And then my, my my, my answer to that was another question. It's like, but that's good for you, right? So why are you, why are you, uh, why are you hesitating, right? Why do you think that's uh, uh, something dangerous? He said, well, but then everybody could build what you're building. I said, yeah. So that triggers us to just stay ahead, right? And also to work together and just make IPMX a success. So that's that's kind of funny that we're here. We run into each other a lot, right, Rob? So uh, and uh, yeah. And we'll bring in Rob Moody from Matrox. Rob, tell us about more the development now that, that's been seen in terms of IPMX. Well, I think having got the fundamentals off the, uh, off the ground so that we can actually deploy um, IPMX systems at scale, the, uh, the logical next step is to start bringing in the extra features that make it more applicable to more people. Um, and just at the moment, we're, uh, we're starting to see the first signs of the uh, uh, priv privacy encryption, yeah. as, as opposed to the HDCP yeah. content okay. rights protection being uh, being introduced. USB support as well is starting to is starting to come in, and a whole bunch of the uh, um, of the other things that are being worked on are moving now towards uh, fruition. So that yeah, at each show from now on, at, at Infocom, at ISE, you're going to see additional things that are coming out of the VSF as we've finished our bit. And that's going to be going into AIMS so that AIMS do their bit with it. Yeah. That, that, that makes it all interoperable and, uh, and, and, and workable with everybody else. And just as you were arriving here, I was talking with Steve about how his, his boxes get into my factory and my boxes get into his factory. Um, yes, with the interoperability you mentioned. Yep. Now this is very, very real because it does benefit everybody. And obviously, Matrix have had some really big wins. You know, talk us through that and what, what kind of verticals that you've seen, again, are more demand from in terms of Matrix. And is there, is there a lot of crossover? I think the most interesting thing about this is when you know that IPMX supports what the broadcasters are doing on their 25 gig networks, but the 10 gig and the 1 gig networks as well, inevitably that crossover is going to be very real. Yeah. And the, uh, the most noticeable trend at the moment is the people who've got broadcast kits, they're not broadcasters. I don't know if you saw it, recent IABM statistic, yeah. they said there are more top-end studios put into non-broadcasters last year than into broadcasters. That says something a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, they have got that crossover between the technologies. IPMX is right up their street, in their backyard, however you want to think of it. 
And, and one of the things that we, one of the things that we really like about IP Max is that it helps break down those silos between the you know traditional you know with be that audio video even even like you know we're, we're looking at like you know in production they wouldn't really talk to broadcast broadcast wouldn't really talk to pro av you know this is something that really brings everything together absolutely right yes and yes i've i think i've said to you before ipmx is not about building fences it's about building bridges yeah and yeah that's that's what's happening here and it's building more bridges brilliant well, thank you very much.